Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Brian Wilgus. I am the Senior Account Manager for Greenhouse Management Magazine, Produce Grower and Nursery Management. Joining us today is Louis Dam, DRAM Canadian Sales Manager, who will be sharing his insights on understanding greenhouse spray equipment. Just a few housekeeping items before we get started. Uh, if you have any questions during the webinar, please enter them in the gray box to the right of your screen. We'll have time for a Q&A at the end of the presentation. Also, a recording of this webinar will be available in the next couple of days. We'll be sending out a link to everyone who registered so that you can either keep or share it with your colleagues. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and get started here. I'd like to introduce Louis Dam from DRAM. Thank you, Brian. Um, hello, everybody. Um, thanks for signing up and uh, listening to this uh, first in a, in a series of webinar webinars. What I'm going to be talking about is, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, is understanding greenhouse spray equipment. And, uh, you know, why this is important is, you know, spray equipment is the, is the equipment that's used basically to apply, you know, our crop protection products. And, and, and crop protection products are very similar to, you know, going to the doctor and if he's going to give you a medication, he's going to give it to you in the form of, uh, you know, of a dose or, or a shot or, or, uh, or a cream, whatever it might be. And, uh, you know, and the accuracy of how that is applied really, really is, is a critical component in, in the performance of the crop protection product. You know, another analogy would be, you know, when we go to the hardware store um, and we're looking for a drill bit of a certain size, it's really not the bit that we're buying, it's we're buying the hole. Um, so, you know, those are, those are some analogies that, uh, you know, we have to keep in mind to, you know, when, when we are applying a crop protection product, whether that be a fungicide, and an insecticide, or a biorational, the the performance of that product is is very dependent on the uh, on the on the method of of applying. Um, so again, uh, uh, what we will be talking about is is equipment. Hey Ryan, I'm hitting my key here, and it's not advancing. The slide. Ah, here we go. So again, the uh, talk is going to be about understanding greenhouse uh, spray equipment. Um, this basically starts with you know again the. Uh, the need for uh, understanding coverage requirements. Um, one of the needs is, is you know, the proper equipment that we're going to be using. Um, part of equipment is proper training. Um, no different than a musical instrument. Uh, you have to pick up that, you can't pick up that, that instrument and just start playing a tune. A lot of people need uh, training and, and practice. Um, technique, again, it's it, like a painter, you know, when we're applying a paint or, you know, painting a car or whatever it might be, the technique of how we use the brush or how we use the, uh, the spray is important and, and most important, proper maintenance. If we, you know, we look at this as medical equipment, the, the accuracy is really also dependent on how, how well we take care of our equipment. Uh, It starts by, you know, understanding the, the particle size or the droplet size. You know, when you look at your tank, you know, and it's full of fluid, that's really, you know, one giant droplet. You know, the droplet might be 100 gallons in size, might be 200 gallons in size. Um, and, and our objective is to break that droplet down into, into smaller particles. And, uh, you know, an example here is, you know, if we look at a droplet size, you know, when you look at the, the, the width of the human hair, um, that is about 100 micron. 10 micron, which we hear a lot about, uh, you know, in humidification systems, 10 micron 
is is the volume of uh, it, there's a thousand and five ten micron particles in a one hundred micron uh, droplet. So as we break that down, and you can actually see on this slide, you know, a little bit of an illustration as to as to the uh, the coverage. And again, so the size of the droplet really matters. Um, and this puts it again into perspective. You know, the smaller the droplet, uh, the uh, better the coverage. So one one hundred micron uh, droplet equals eight. 50 micron droplets, which equals, um, or what, or equals, you know, 1,005 10 micron droplets. Um, you know, and, and what does this really mean, you know, when we look at an adult white fly? You know, and here's an example. So if we're applying 100 micron droplets, um, we have to apply a lot of them to really you know, hit that white fly. So when you look at the size of the insect, you know, the target, the size of the droplet, and keep in mind, these are flying insects. So some of them we want to knock down out of the air. It's really hard to do that with, with, larger, uh, with larger droplets. And keep in mind, I'm using a 100 micron as example. Many growers out there are using droplet sizes of, of anywhere from 200 to 500 micron. Uh, if we change that droplet size to 50 micron, uh, same volume of, uh, of insecticide or, or crop protection, um, our odds of hitting that insect are much higher. If we change that to a 10 micron droplet, you know, you know that insect doesn't have a chance. It's really going to have a difficult time escaping any of the droplets that are, that are coming at it. And as we get into the world of biorationals, you know, which are not not quick kill products, they're they're basically living fungi. The important thing is that we make contact, and we want that fungi to grow. If we miss our target, um, the fungi is not going to grow where we want. And it's not going to take care of the insect pressure that that we have. Um, so with that, you know, there are many different you know application method choices. Um, that that growers can choose from. You know, one of them is uh, you know using high volume hydraulic sprayer, which is the traditional wet spray, uh, which most labels are uh, are written for. Most of our chemistries are written for that. Um, then we have what we call the uh, targeted low volume. You know, at the Dram Company, this is. Uh, you know, we look at this equivalent to, uh, you know, a giant aerosol can, a manual aerosol can operates at high pressure um, or they can operate at low pressure. But the, the point is that we want to see this machine produce more of a 50 micron range droplet. And then we have our what we call our targeted low volume uh, machines. And the targeted low volume are basically for you know, uh, space applications, they can be automatic or they can be, they can be manual. Uh, so that would be considered a, you know, the ultra low volume or ULV. High volume hydraulic is by far the most common and every grower has one of these machines. Um, it's necessary in the, in the, in the uh, equipment, uh, um, fleet. Um, generally, the high volume um, hydraulic sprayers have have higher flow rates. Um, they can have flow rates of up to, you know, 16 liters or, or four gallons per minute. The uh, you use your standard labeled rates. So if you know, it doesn't matter what chemistry you're applying, whether it's an insecticide or a fungicide, most of the labels are written. Um, you know, so many ounces per gallon or, or uh, so many mils uh, per liter or per hundred liters. And that generally what goes into the tank. They are a wetter application, which at certain times of the year um, has, uh, has some, some big disadvantages. Certain times of year, this may be an advantage. We'll get into that a little bit later. 
and all the hydraulic uh, high volume sprayers um, are, are generally over 100 micron. Very few of these machines are less than 100 microns. You know, here's an example of, uh, of a smaller um, hydraulic sprayer. Uh, you know, doing a doing a you know a floor application. Um, one of the the key considerations that growers have to make when choosing a machine and choosing a product is is knowing what they're going to spray. These slides show you know a number of the different scenarios from one greenhouse operation to the next. Or, you know, if we're in the bedding plant industry, which is a seasonal industry, we may have all of these um, different leaf masses, uh, uh, you know, in our, in our crop uh, uh, inventory. On the, 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 the slide on the left here shows, you know, basically a seedling crop. Um, here we have, a, you know, a container a vegetable crop. And then on the far right here, we have a uh, uh, high wire pepper crop. A lot of labels are written um, based on the elution rates. Um, they don't tell you how much product to apply uh, to each uh, individual crop and the volume that's going to need, be needed. That's really up for the grower to decide. To decide. Um, quite often, the label will say, you know, apply to point of runoff or uh, spray to adequate coverage. You know, there's a lot of loose terms that we have to, that we have, as growers, we have to kind of separate and define. And uh, we have waxy leaf surfaces, we have fuzzy leaf surfaces, we have vertical leaf surfaces, we have horizontal leaf surfaces. Uh, you know, these are all, all considerations in choosing uh, a piece of equipment. Um, you know, and one of the pieces of equipment on on a sprayer is the uh, is the spray gun itself. You know, we do want to look at the at the flow rate. Um, if we have a you know a a waxy leaf surfaces or or, or you know a, a vertical leaf surface, you know we're not going to want to have a very high flow rate um, because if we're too high, that water is just going to run off. We know what it's like when we wash cars, um, and the car is well waxed. You know the the, the droplet will be the droplets will beat up and collect, and just slide right off. And and this happens a lot in plants, where we're we're the, the, our crop protection product is sliding off, and we're just not getting the stick or the coverage um, that that we uh, that we need. Um, look at the pressure range. Um, you know, most hydraulic sprayers operate anywhere between uh, 100 pounds pressure right up to 650 pounds pressure. Um, you know, that's that's an important factor. The higher the pressure, the finer the droplet's going to be. Um, you know, look at the pattern um, that the uh, that the gun is going to put out. Um, and again, this is one of the things that that is important for for practicing. Look at the width of the pattern, and look at the direction of the momentum. And this is something that that a lot of growers uh, are confused with, and they don't spend enough time practicing with. Is the you know the spray gun is really the final um, delivery point or the exit of the uh, of the spray product that we have in our tank. Um, and we want to make sure that we're able to, you know, adjust the uh, the pattern so that we get again that, that proper coverage. Um, quick disconnects on, on a spray gun machine, or on the spraying machine is really important. We like to use the heavy duty stainless steel because a lot of sprayers are being used for the crop protection products, but we're also using for oxidizers, you know, anything that's a hydrogen peroxide base or, you know, chlorine or, uh, uh, which can be corrosive and damaging to material. So if we want to interchange guns, let's make sure that we have a very good um, 
quick disconnect to go from one gun to the next. And here's a, you know, a JD-9 showing the five different nozzle tips that we can change, change our droplet size and our, and our spray pattern. Here's a, a drenching tool that can be attached to a hydraulic sprayer. Um, so if we want to do what we call a manual drench application, uh, this is basically working on accounting method, which you know I'll talk a little bit further in uh, in this presentation. Um, and then we have the uh, the Italian spray gun, which which is very helpful in getting underleaf coverage. This can actually slide up and down. We can regulate the droplet size and the and the tumbling effect by moving this. We have a lever to adjust the, the droplet size or the the, uh, the the momentum and the distance that we spray. Um, this gun is even used in in nurseries where we have very tall trees. So we have to get to the top for maybe uh, you know some caterpillar control. Um, and of course, we can adjust the pressure. And, and volume output on the spray machine itself at the pump. This is an L5 lance, very good tool for uh, you know for crops that if we're going after spider mite um, or any insect that we, and then we're applying a contact insecticide, and we need to get underneath the leaves. You know, underleaf spray coverage is always a challenge, um, and the best way to get that underleaf coverage and, and ensure that we get that underleaf coverage is use a spray lance that we can actually slide in underneath the crop. Very popular with, uh, with poinsettias as we, uh, as we need to control the, uh, the white fly issues and maybe some mite issues that might be underneath. Okay, so uh, a hydraulic sprayer gun, you know, what is the theory behind a hydraulic spray gun? You know, how does this thing really work? So generally, this is what comes out of the gun. And the area underneath here, that's what we call propulsion. So that's where we're going to get our distance. And that can be, that can be controlled by, by the, uh, the pressure of the, of the machine and its type of uh, nozzle tip that's being used in the gun. The, the diffusion is basically the breakup of that droplet where we stay, it starts, you know, it's, it's being propelled into the air and the, the actual air density, the air mass is slowing it down and we get some, uh, some uh, tumbling and turning and, and, uh, and movement of that, of that spray mass. We see that a lot on, you know, a good example of this is if you ever follow a tractor trailer or a truck or someone's got a very flat, back end, you also get some diffusion and some drag um, because it's always the back doors of a truck that, uh, that get very dirty. So, so this diffusion component is a pretty important part of uh, our whole underleaf strategy and that can be controlled by this component right here. That actually slides up and down. If we want the propulsion to be shorter, we can actually adjust this here. And where we might want to make it shorter would be if we're applying on to uh, you know a, a, a crop that's got you know small leaf mass could be seedlings um, where you know the size of the droplet sometimes is as big as the plant itself so where we really want tiny droplets and, and good coverage targeted low volume is another type of uh, uh, e series of equipment and that's where we're taking higher pressure or we're taking um, specific doses of a product and that we could really, you know, aim in a specific area. Um, you know, these are droplets that are generally in the range of 50 micron. Um, as DRAM works in this category more, we will have more uh, droplets or, or more targeted um, low volume machines that we can even, you know, put a larger droplet out. Sometimes, you know, in the in the medicinal world, we run into some struggles with uh, with labeling, and what we're finding is the more adjustment that we have uh, on the machine, 
it's almost like adapting the uh, the product the machine to the product that's being applied so that we're meeting all the uh, labeling requirements uh, the targeted low volume is generally a much lower uh, flow rate anywhere between uh, one and and uh, and five liters output per minute uh, we can even you know with some of some of the machines that with that we have out now we can even go as low as uh, you know four and a half gallons um, per hour um, but that is a very very tiny tiny droplet um, so it is a lower flow rate um, generally you use reduced rates of products on the crop so the rule of thumb um, with the uh, with the high pressure cold fogger is uh, one liter of solution per thousand uh, square feet or 10 liters of solution per 10,000 square feet. As an example, uh, we're always at DRAM, we're always available to assist growers on how to calculate um, and calibrate for this. Um, we do have to read the labels carefully and we really have to know what crop uh, crop protection product is going on. Uh, it is a drier application. So if we're applying a fungicide, you know, at a time of the year where we, you know, we're, we're actually combating uh, water related issues, uh, moisture causes botrytis, you know, it induces uh, some, uh, you know, the change in wet, dry, wet, dry can induce some mildew. Um, problems. Um, the targeted low volume really helps with with controlling and, and not adding more water to the crop where we don't need the water on the on the tissue. Um, and again, droplets are less than than 100 micron, usually in the 40 to 60 uh, to 70 micron droplet size range. <coughs> Excuse me, where you know. Again, the droplet size is also very important with regards to you know, how fast does it drop out of the air. Uh, a 50 micron droplet will fall uh, from an eight foot height to, to, the, to the crop in about, in about 15 seconds. You know, a 10 micron droplet may, may take up to uh, 90 minutes for gravity to pull that down. And a 100 micron droplet is, uh, is going to be much quicker. It could be as little as as uh, as uh, ten seconds. You know, here's a, an example of an older machine, uh, targeted low volume machine in a in a large facility. Um, again, you know, make note of the the suit and the and the uh, personal protection um, when we start working with very small droplets we want to make sure that we have the best um, personal equipment uh, possible these droplets are small we do not want them to get through any cracks or anything in our in our in our headgear so you know when when people ask me what do i use what should i have for uh for uh, personal uh protection equipment i'll just say get the best that you can afford best money can buy you know, your health is the most important. Don't take any risks on compromising your health. Here's an, one of the newest um, pieces of uh, targeted low volume equipment. We actually call this the Turbo ULV Hybrid. And the reason we call it a hybrid machine is this is an example of a piece of equipment that can be used for many different applications. It is a low volume, it's targeted low volume, it could also be a wet sprayer. And how this machine works, we have a five liter, just about, about a gallon and a half uh, tank. There's actually a blower. This is the gun. So it looks, it, it operates similar to a leaf blower, but there's some vacuum and pressure that pushes the solution out of the tank. And this piece here, this is the nozzle. The machine comes with seven nozzles. This is what determines the droplet size and the application flow rate. Um, 
the application flow rate can range from roughly four and a half gallons uh, a minute up, or sorry, four and a half gallons an hour up to 30 gallons an hour. Uh, this is a wonderful machine for, you know, small applications, precision foliar application. We have a lot of this, this equipment has really been taken up by the uh, by the medicinal industry where we have different leaf masses we can't have foliar um, staining of any type and uh, we don't want to get the crop wet so this is a very versatile uh, machine it's called again the, the dram turbo ulv hybrid and the reason it's called a hybrid is the uh, flexibility in the flow rate and the droplet size um, that it produces Great tool for, uh, you know, if anybody is struggling, you know, in the south with, with mealybug um, and we really need to, you know, get some pressure to penetrate the foliage to get at that insect, you know, this is a wonderful machine to do do that with. If you're applying mill stop on, on a medicinal crop or on, on seedlings um, or, or small leaf plants or, or some, some plants that have some foliar mass, you could really get this get the product into the crop with this machine. You're not gonna be doing acres and acres with this machine unless you have a team out there because it is a, it's got such a small tank. And it's electric, so instead of dragging a hose through the greenhouse, you're gonna be dragging a, uh, an extension cord. And on my farm, uh, you know, my guys prefer to drag an extension cord than a hose. So it is a very easy machine to, uh, to work with. Um, ultra low volume these are basically you know what we would call space sprayers or fogging machines uh, these machines produce um, very very small droplets and uh, with reduced chemical rates and uh, very little uh, very little water is used so when we when we formulate for uh, this application we have to be very careful as to where the machine is positioned, what kind of airflow we have, what is our ventilation system, and uh, and with with the auto fog, it's going to take time to apply. With uh, the pulse fog, thermal fogger, um, this is a machine that we can get the job done very very quickly. Um, it literally produces uh, billions of droplets. The testing that we've done um, with the auto fog is we're in a range of uh, you know, five to 10 micron is 80% of the droplets. Pulse fog would be slightly larger, probably in the range of 15 to 25 micron. Here's an example of, uh, of the auto fog working in a large greenhouse vegetable facility. Basically doing a space application and, and integrated with the climate control computer. The, uh, with the auto fog, like what was shown on the previous slide, that takes much more time to apply. So that's usually an evening application. It's automatic. We can set the machine up and walk away. Um, the pulse fog, which is uh, a thermal fogger, also produces very, very fine droplets, but the speed of application is much quicker. And where this machine is important, when we get into times of the year where we don't have the time to apply with an auto fog, you know, we're in, we're getting into spring shipping where our days are long and our nights are short. Um, this is a machine that we can apply a lot of product in a large range in a very short period of time. And that's very important for, uh, for, uh, for purging prior to uh, you know employees coming back in, we have to really pay close attention to you know our re-entry uh, rules on products. And again, this machine can apply you know any product from uh, a chemistry to uh, any of the biorational products. Uh, this machine comes in a series 
of, of sizes and models, including models that are, that are designed to include the application of, of the biorational products. Drenching is another form of uh, applying crop protection. Um, this is probably getting, you know, this is also very close to getting to, uh, you know, getting that proper dose of uh, product into the pot, into the soil. You know, we're going to apply a, an insecticide in the soil or we're going to apply a fungicide or even, a, you know, a beneficial organism. Um, there are different ways to get that in the soil. The larger the operation, the larger the business, the more pots we have to do. Uh, the more tedious the job can become. You know, very important for applying uh, products like like bonsai or any of our uh, our growth regulators. Um, you know, in the old days, and in the old days are still with us. You know, drenching um, could be basically you know using uh, you know the one one thousand uh, counting method. Um, trying to do a rhythm and guess um, can be using an injector. Um, it's not very accurate. It's very difficult to uh, to delegate this job to somebody that doesn't have rhythm or timing. Um, you know, and this is this is very important when we're applying growth regulators because if this isn't applied properly, you're going to have a very uneven uh, uneven crop. You know, I remember my grandfather applying to uh, poinsettias and he was using a measuring cup and, you know, they would actually measure uh, uh, and pour, you know, thousands and thousands of six inch poinsettias. And it would take days, uh, if not weeks, to get this, this job done. Um, it was much more accurate, uh, but it was tedious. You know, DRAM has come out with some dosing systems where we can actually uh, use a machine that that combines uh, both methods. It's uh, it's accurate and it's also automated and pre prevents and eliminates any over or underdosing of the uh, of the product. Uh, the automated interval just simply helps the grower move from one pot to the next without spillage in between. This is not a really good quality slide. Um, this basically shows the, uh, the control panel of the one of the automated systems where we can actually key in and lock um, the, uh, the dose rate and, and give it to a, an employee that's capable. Here's a short video that shows you know, the Chembo, ChemDose 2, which is a computerized system, and how it's applied. This ChemDose can be attached to a sprayer. Um, it can be attached to a um, injector cart. So that was the uh, ChemDose 2, uh, which basically meters, and this is the, the CD12 or the ChemDose 12 that is based on a on a mechanical timer. Another another piece of equipment that's that's really come out in the last few years is uh, the what we call an agitation aeration machine uh, and this is been necessary for the application of uh, you know beneficials in the soil like like nematodes um, where we need to keep them alive and uh, and we also want to apply at a at a very uh, at an accurate rate. So we're using a mechanical injector injector here, but there is an aeration uh, device in there as well that basically circulates the water and pumps in a little bit of air. It keeps the water moving, 
so that the, uh, the beneficial in the tank actually stays alive. Uh, we also have an aeration bucket of this version. Some customers use this, the, uh, the bucket as a, as a method of, of also pre-mixing some, uh, some of their chemistries. Foaming, I had a video on this, but my computer decided last night to tell me that it was full, so I had a hard time loading the, the video. You know, foaming is really coming into, uh, into uh, a common use in the greenhouse industry. Um, what foaming will do is it helps us, you know, apply a product that may be necessary to clean up some algae problems uh, that we have. You know, we have a lot of growers that are also using the foam to apply, you know, products like Xerotol or, or uh, uh, a Sanidate type product to control the algae in top of the pots. The advantage with the foam is, is it stays on the top where the algae is, uh, is present and obvious. Uh, the foam can also be applied onto a vertical wall where, you know, gravity is our enemy. And it's very difficult to get some some stick on that wall, but foaming is uh, a wonderful method to apply. You know, cleaners, disinfectants. Um, you know, anybody in the vegetable industry. You know, that's part of you know any food safety programs. Um, you know, foaming is also a good way to apply different oxidizers to keep our conveyors clean, keep our belts clean, uh, keep our equipment clean. So this is something that's really uh, becoming popular in the uh, in the commercial greenhouse industry. So you know all of this equipment is wonderful, um, and they're all great tools. But you know one of the things that I see in the field is you know the need for for growers and grower personnel to train themselves. Um, you know practicing. Practice, when you get a new piece of equipment, practice with it. Put some water in, maybe a couple of drops of soap. Um, if it's a smaller machine, because, uh, you know, some dish soap can act as a spreader sticker. Don't put too much in it in a tank that's got, you know, some very good agitation because you'll have a tank full of suds uh, if that happens. But, you know, training yourself by practicing, um, evaluating equipment, Practice with all equipment because every piece of equipment has different features to it. And, and, and you know, one of the things that, that, is, that is really important, there is no one way to do it. Everybody's body that's controlling the equipment is different. We all have different comfort levels. Um, as long as we're getting the job done correctly, um, it doesn't matter how it's done. But it's going to take some practice and evaluation to... Uh, to get it done properly. Um, you know, this is, uh, this is an example of what happens many times. You know, I call it the Friday night syndrome when, you know, we've got our, we got our spray mix made, we're in a hurry and uh, we have our tank full of solution and we haven't timed ourselves. And uh, what happens is, you know, we're spraying right along and uh, we get 75% away to the greenhouse, and guess what? We run out of solution. Now what do we do? Now we got to go back and mix some more up. Are we going to mix the same amount up as what we started with? You know, the other issue is, the other thing that happens a lot of time if we don't calibrate ourselves is, is uh, you know, we can end up going through 50% of the of the facility and find that we're we've used up 75 percent of our solution and that means we've got 25 percent of the tank left to divide over the remaining 50 percent that we have to spray you know this is not a good thing not many growers not many uh um owner operators go back and mix up the right amount so that we're applying evenly through the whole range. And then we get phone calls about, you know, equipment not working. The, you know, the crop protection companies get calls that, you know, they've got resistance issues. 
you know, there's a lot, there's a lot of onus on the grower to make sure that we are splitting that tank up and applying it properly um, and spraying properly. Here's a, here's an example of what not to do. What you will notice here is the grower is applying the spray and putting it towards himself. And what happens in that case is the coverage when he's got his arms spread out is much less um, than when it's over his evenness of coverage. But his coverage over here is very concentrated and his coverage over here is more spread. So at this point, this could also be considered a sprinch. We're over here, we're spraying. So, you know, one way to correct this, in this particular case, the grower was also spraying, uh, or he was walking into the spray. You know, I prefer to have growers walking away from the spray. That's a health and safety issue, but we also have a much better, much better control of our body motions and our body rhythm. Um, an example would be right over here is, you know, work on a pie shape um, and make sure that we've got even coverage as we're moving and moving back in a rhythm that we're covering the whole crop evenly. What we saw over here is not even, and this is a very common mistake. And anybody that does a lot of hand watering you know, pay attention because this is the same problem with uh, with hand watering accuracy. When you pull that wand down, you get higher volume covering a shorter area. Um, yes, the soil and the plants look wet, but that doesn't mean we've got the same concentration of crop protection um, on the on the crop. There are different tools that you can use to train yourself. You can use a UV dye, um, which then you can look under a black light, or you can use uh, hydrosensitive paper. The hydrosensitive paper is, is a quicker solution, um, and you, see, you can see some immediate results. Um, you need a black light to really see the coverage of the, of the, of the dye. And when you're using ultra low volume machines, the droplet size is too small for the uh, for the dye to actually show up. Here, here's what we see is you know basically the spray coverage um, and how the paper reacts to uh, to a blue in color. What what is blue and purple is basically all the droplets. So again, if this is a, a systemic or if this is a white fly. Um, problem and we're applying an stem, a systemic product, we know we've got good coverage if we see this kind of kind of pattern. Uh, and DRAM has that that available. And and what you can do if you want to test yourself or you know do an audit on on some uh, some applicators that you have on the farm or in the greenhouse, you can basically break the hydrosensitive paper down staple it to the underside of a leaf or put them you know anywhere throughout the crop make sure you mark them you know uh, somewhere somehow you you may want to hide them um, so that who's doing the application doesn't know where they are um, but you have to you have to mark them yourself because i've done it in the greenhouse where i forgot where i put them and when they changed color i couldn't find them back so you know use a post use a mark on a bench you know draw a line in the uh, you know, on the ground, you know, put a tie wrap or something on the bench that you know in the proximity of the area where you should be looking for that for that that paper. Timing um, is probably the biggest. You know, we either have we apply too much product or not enough product. You know, directly related to timing. Um, so you know, a stopwatch. Many of us have cell phones with a, with, with a clock on it. You know, there's there's no reason why we can't time ourselves. We have the tools in our pockets most of the day. Um, we want to time and calibrate our equipment. You can't know what you're spraying 
out if you don't know the rate it's coming out of the gun. So we do want to spray into a measuring cup and uh, and, uh, and and then measure the time that you're spraying and uh, and then measure how much volume actually came out. And every grower should be doing this on a very regular basis because nozzle tips do wear, equipment wears, so your output rate will change over time with, with any machine. Be very careful um, if you're using a, uh, a measuring cup um, that it's basically you're timing it with water um, because if, you, if, the, if the bucket or the cup is too small, you will get some, some uh, um, splash back and you don't want that uh, coming into your face. So, you know, if you could even put a, a bucket with a, a lid on it and, you know, a hole that the, the gun goes in, um, it's a very important part of, you know, understanding, you know, what we're applying. One of the newer technologies that, that DRAM has introduced is what we call an automatic hose rewind. Um, the, the, originally, the purpose of this was to take some of the physical labor out of rewinding the hose. Um, and when you do the, you know, larger operations, you start measuring the cost of rewinding the hose every time you spray out. Um, but another big value for this is this is just not just a electric um, hose rewind. Uh, it is actually a timed rewind. So rather than, so what, what the machine will do, there's actually a little computer control in here. And what it does is you can set the speed of the rewind hose, rewinding of the hose. And that also is, is a very valuable um, calibration tool. If you know that you're, re, you know, that you're, you have to come back at a certain speed based on the output of the nozzle if your hose is is winding at a rate of you know one and a half feet or two feet every um, five seconds it's very easy then to calibrate um, how long it's going to take you to come from one point of the greenhouse to the other and you will know how much solution you have so if you use this rewind and tie the speed of the rewind to the area that you have to cover and the volume of solution you have, then it's pretty hard to not apply, um, you know, apply the volume accurately. You know, as long as the grower then understands the rhythm and the sweep that he or she is going to work with on the spray. But this is an automatic spray hose rewind is a very valuable tool in uh, in calibrating your output and your spray coverage. Again, originally it was it came out to take some physical labor away from the rewinding, but it's uh, become much more valuable than that. The consequence of you know calibrating yourself is uh, is better coverage. Um, we are not going to run out of solution. We're going to make sure that the solution is is applied um, evenly and properly we know where we're going to be in terms of the volume within within the range and uh you know we're going to win and get the results that we need with uh with the crop protection product that we're applying maintenance you know that's the last point um that's really really important you know, a lot of people look, you know, I got some feedback from some friends and people that I knew about uh, and from some of my colleagues that, you know, my picture on the on the webinar that was looking a little bit grumpy. And they said, why do you look so grumpy on that, uh, on your picture? And I says, well, probably because growers uh, aren't cleaning their machines properly or taking care of their machines. If you don't take care of equipment, the equipment can't take care of you. That piece of equipment is really important. It is applying the, you know, some very valuable crop protection. It's applying, it's 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 applying insurance for you on having a good crop. It's taking care of problems. Um, 
So we need to keep the machines clean. You know, we know with our, our, our license certifications on buying the different crop protection products, you know, one of the rules is, you know, triple rinse your containers. Well, triple rinse your machines as well. It's, uh, it, ha it has, uh, you know, incredible pay payback by doing that. I hear from growers that, you know, they use their, their, their machines to apply a fungicide and then they're struggling when they're applying biorationals. They don't understand why the biorationals don't work. If you don't have a clean machine and you've applied a fungicide or an oxidizer, chances are you, you've killed the biorational, any potential of the biorational simply by not cleaning the machine. So you literally went out and spent your time spraying water. You know, too many times products take the blame for not working. Growers have to understand that they have to do their part on keeping their equi equipment uh, running correctly, keeping them clean so that we get the best uh, bang for a buck. You know, nozzle accuracy, you know, again, the timing issue is key. We have to know what's coming out of that machine in order to know what to put on. Cleaning filters, you know, dram machines have filters all over the place. Um, you know, we keep that filter clean. The filters are usually placed in a convenient spot so nobody can say it's too hard to get at. Um, we keep those filters clean. You know, they're not going to plug up on us and the product is going to flow. Um, again, a filter that's inside, you know, one of the uh, high pressure uh, fogging guns. You know, this filter does not look like a whole lot's going to get through. So clean the filters, rinse the filters. Filters are the first step in keeping our guns from, uh, from clogging up. There's nothing worse than when you're spraying on Friday night and, uh, you know, you're partway through a row and uh, suddenly, uh, you know, the gun plugs up. You know, keep that filter clean. It, it saves a lot of aggravation. Also make sure that your equipment is in good state of repair. You know, here's a gun that should have been, you know, thrown in a recycle bin a long time ago. You know, this is what we saw at a customer. And you can see that crack there. Um, and the, you know, the first clue is the tie wraps. And when you look at the value of your inventory, you look at the cost of the product that you're applying, um, don't cut corners by trying to make equipment that should have been uh, retired trying to make it work. You're not going to get the results. Um, use the right equipment, update your equipment, take care of your equipment at all times. Here you get a closer look, see how it's cracked there? Um, that's a disaster waiting to happen. Again, nozzle accuracy, nozzle tips, I can't emphasize that more. Um, make sure that we're you know, we're calibrating and changing the nozzles out um, uh, as needed. Uh, I try to keep nozzles with my machines in my greenhouse uh, because if by chance a nozzle is going to clog, I don't want to have to run to the toolbox and go looking for it. I'm basically set up at the machine that if something's going to go wrong, I'm going to be ready for it because sometimes these things just simply happen. Um, but be ready. And, uh, and pay attention to the nozzle tips. This comes to an end. Uh, Brian said we had some time for some questions. And uh, if there's questions, I'd be happy to uh, uh, take some on. Great, Louis. Well, thank you so much. We, we appreciate everything here. Um, we do have a few questions. Um, coming from Trevor, he asked, which of these sprayers are fine with live bacteria? I've heard that bacteria are killed at certain PSI and would like to hear about that. Um, Trevor, that's a good question. And uh, you're right. Um, I would say that the Turbo ULV is very good at, at applying, um, you know, basically living um, you know, organisms. If we're applying a product like, uh, like a uh, Bacillus surgensis, you know, that is not a living uh, bacteria. Um, so the Turbo ULV hybrid is a very good machine. The, uh, the, the, 
the the bio pulse fogs are good for applying um, uh, living bacteria. One of the misunderstandings with the pulse fogs is that the heat damages the product. Um, the biggest risk with with the thermal fog or because it's kinetic energy or a series of explosions is uh, shattering the plot product through the explosion process um, the bio machine basically shields um, or cushions the explosion process so that the bio whether it's a botanic guard or a dipel or anything like that uh, can be applied the auto fog is wonderful for doing space applications and i know um Feynman Research in Ontario, Canada, not that long ago, published a paper on, you know, um, the application of biostimulants, and they compared an LVM to uh, an ultra-low volume to uh, to a hydraulic sprayer, and the biorational coverage was uh, much higher with the LVM. So, uh, so Trevor's question is a good one. Um, you know the the machines that I just mentioned are are the best machines for applying those products. But but new biorational products are in development and coming, and uh, you know it's best to try to learn about those uh, those chemistries before we just dump it into a machine and hope for the best. Uh, generally, the smaller the droplet, the better the uh, the results. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Louie. And then we have another question from Bernardo um, asking, when using the hydrosensitive paper, how soon or how long after the application do you recommend checking the paper? I would check the paper as quickly as possible because it's almost instantaneous that the, uh, that the paper reacts. Um, you know, and, and make sure that, you know, that there's no watering or or uh, you know, going on, make sure that the leaves are dry because the paper will also pick up moisture off the leaf. Um, but but the hydrosensitive paper reacts very quickly. Okay, and then um, we have another question from Elder. What method would you use to calibrate a mist blower? A mist blower. Um, I would also use. Um, you know, if you're using water, you know, what you can do with a mist blower is basically, you know, put some solution in its tank and run it outside for a minute or two and then measure the difference um, of the amount that you started with to what you have left. Um, you know, an auto fog can be considered a mist blower in the Dram series of equipment. It actually has a suction tube that you can take out of the solution tank and have it suck out of a measuring cup. So if you start out with uh, with 16 ounces or or 500 milliliters, again, run it for a minute or two and then shut the machine off and you'll get a good idea as to what's, uh, what's come out. Now calibrating output does not mean you've calibrated the droplet size. So knowledge on the nozzle and guidelines on the nozzle on you know what output rate is ideal for droplet size uh, preferences is, uh, is a good piece of information to have. Okay, and then we have, um, are there better spray options for different genus of plants or young versus mature plants? Generally, the smaller the leaf mass or this leaf surface, the you know basically the smaller the droplet you're going to want to have. Um, that's that's a, that question also goes back to calibration. You know when you start looking at at uh, you know the the foliar density, the thickness of the crop, you know is also going to determine you know how well can we penetrate. Um, so that's there, you know that and that question can be answered uh, a number of ways. A vertical leaf, um, you know, if we take for instance a pepper or uh, anybody that grows cyclamen, um, 
you know, or begonias. You you look at the leaf style and 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 how that leaf is hanging. You know, I would choose a smaller droplet uh, because I know I'm going to get the stick. If I wet spray or hydraulically spray, you know, the runoff um, can be much higher. And a lot of those plants are also sensitive to detritus, so we don't want them running off and staying wet through the night, you know, uh, causing uh, other, uh, you know, disease disorders as a result of too much water. So foliar mass, um, you know, leaf size, uh, leaf type, you know, it's got a waxy cuticle, is it slippery or, uh, you know, if you compare an English cucumber to, uh, to a pepper, you know, they're both vegetables, but very different plants in terms of the machine or the droplet size you might use. That's a whole other presentation, you know, all by itself. Okay, well, great. Well, thank you, everybody. That's all the time we have for. Um, thank you for taking the time out of your busy days. I know everybody, uh, some people are going to lunch, but um, Louis, you have been very uh, helpful here in uh, the education that you provided. Um, please join us for the next DRAM webinar. It's going to be on September 18th at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We will be promoting that and feel free to register. Um, for the questions that we did not get to, I will be sure to send Louis those questions and he will get back to you with um, anything um, that you guys need. Thanks again. Great, thank you.